more than a dozen gay bars across Portland, but for the last decade, there has not been one single lesbian bar. The organization, the Lesbian Bar Project, reports that in the 80s, there were more than 200 of these businesses. Today, there are fewer than 30. And the Central East Side here at Doc Marie's, they're hoping to reverse that trend by providing that space. They also have a name that's rooted in Portland history. At a new bar in Central Southeast. Everyone's absolutely welcome here but we're also a proud lesbian bar. Is the resurgence of a space Portland has not had for 12 years. We really wanted to preserve cool spaces, bring people together, and facilitate queer joy. Doc Marie's opened in September, one watering hole in a growing desert of lesbian bars. These are very special, very unique spaces that have their own kind of energy. It would be a real shame if they disappeared entirely. With this space, Olga is keeping that history alive. Our history is so short and not captured and not written down as much as non-marginalized peoples. And so much of it gets lost. You know, I, I talk to tons of 20-somethings that don't know about Stonewall. And having someone that's in their 70s talking to someone that's in their 20s in my bar is an amazing thing to see happen. The name for the space is a piece of Portland history named for Dr. Marie Equi, a woman who was known as just Doc by Portlanders a century ago. She was an out lesbian and a doctor, an abortion provider, abortion rights advocate, civil rights advocate that lived in Portland about 100 years ago. Living as an out lesbian with an adopted child 100 years ago, what goes through your mind when you think about that? Just badass, you know, <laughs> honestly, like that's, that's what goes through my mind. And honestly, what immediately comes to mind is she did not ask permission from anyone to do that. And I find that very inspirational. That unforgiving attitude is the influence behind Olga's creation of this space. She believes there's a clear reason why the several gay bars have not had a lesbian counterpart for more than a decade in the Rose City. A lot of times women have to explain why they're taking up space and kind of like, what's in it for everyone else? <laughs> and the, I just, I don't think that gay bars, the traditional kind of like more male identified gay bar, uh, have to face that same kind of scrutiny. And I think that there is something about a woman-owned, woman-centered space unapologetically taking up room and being themselves that throws people off. That's as women and lesbians were the stabilizing force in the queer rights and marriage equality movements, movements that gained traction in the aftermath of the AIDS epidemic. As women, we are automatically taught to decenter ourselves and to uplift other voices and center other people. You know, for example, the reason that it's LGBT lesbian is placed in the beginning of it because they were so helpful in serving to gay men during the AIDS crisis. By the mid 90s, um, when we started moving into the marriage equality movement, that trauma was so huge. We'd lost a generation of male leaders uh, the lesbian community really stepped up and took care of the gay community. Mike Marshall, who now leads Oregon Recovers, was part of the marriage equality movement in California in the late 90s after moving to San Francisco earlier in the decade. He came to a city in mourning from the AIDS crisis. You have the huge trauma. Whether you became HIV positive or not, you know, your, your roommate, your colleague, your boyfriend, your exes were dying during a period of time and nobody seemed to care. Marshall says it felt like one trauma on top of another, a mourning that came after decades of queer people questioning their existence because of the society around them. We were a highly traumatized community pre-AIDS AIDS crisis, right? Because we were raised to believe that um, uh, we were flawed. And it was at the, the tail end of the worst years of the AIDS epidemic, uh, which had fostered an environment in which People didn't know if they were going to be alive the next year, and so boundaries were were constantly being blown blown out. Bars that opened for the safety of queer people and the safety of people who had to hide their sexuality became spaces of self-medication. Early on, the safe space for queer people was in bars. That combination is one of the factors Marshall believes queer and trans people struggle with addiction at a disproportionately higher rate than straight people. In the face of legislative attacks on drag shows and trans rights, mental health experts fear substance abuse rates could rise again. It's painful. Not only are you dealing with your own coming out process and, and, and your own uh, internal 
possible homophobia or whatever phobia you're dealing with, um, but you're also dealing with a community that's, that's resonating with that negative message and giving you that message in a hundred different ways. The National Institutes for Health reports that 39% of LGBTQ people will struggle with addiction at some point in their lives. For heterosexual people, it's 17%. While addiction is more prevalent in the queer and trans community, places specifically tailored for their treatment are not. In all of Oregon, there is just one queer and trans specific recovery organization for them to go. That's True Colors Recovery in North Portland. What we want is for people to walk into the door, feel safe, feel like they don't have to explain who they are, and can really like lean into focusing on what their recovery journey looks like. Amanda had to overcome her own addiction. After she did, she worked with 4D Recovery. She and the leaders there found the need was high for what they were providing for everyone, but especially the LGBTQ community. Do you think that survival is exaggerated or accentuated in the queer and trans community? I think that everyone, every one of us have had experience with having to uh, walk into the room and assess whether we were safe to be ourselves or not. So I think that survival mentality is very prominent in our community.